Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about the best vlogging cameras of 2017. Hi everybody, my name is Curtis Uses with CurtisUsesPhotography.com, a place where you can become the photographer that you've always wanted to be. Today we're going to talk about the best vlogging cameras of 2017. So I've been in the business since 1986 as a commercial photographer, but I've done video ever since video came out. So I've done industrial videos, I've done vlogging, you name it, I've done it, I've worked with it. So there are some things that we want to keep an eye on when we're talking about vlogging cameras and specifically things that we probably want in a vlogging camera. Now, some of the things we want in a vlogging camera, number one, we probably want some sort of image stabilization, whether it's optical or electronic. You're going to be moving around. It's going to be jostling around a bit. So we want to try to keep the image as stable as possible to not give the viewer motion sickness or nausea. So I'm one of those people. If I see the camera moving around all over the place, it's not holding still. It's like my eyes are glued to my forehead. I can't move my eyes around and I get sick. Okay, so we want to try to keep it as steady as possible. Number two, we want some sort of feedback. Now, this isn't always the case. If you're an experienced vlogger and you've been doing it a while, you kind of have an idea of when the camera's pointed at you and when it's not. But it's nice to have that optical feedback. In other words, a screen that flips up or to the side to where you can see what's going on and how you're framed in the shot. And then three, ease of use. So I don't want a camera for my personal camera to be super heavy. Remember, you're going to be holding that out at the end of your arm eight hours in a day or longer shooting footage. And if it's a heavy rig, you're going to get tired and then the camera's going to start sagging a bit and it's going to be at a low angle. Um, but there's a lot of things to consider for, for vlogging cameras. Are you going to be shooting in 1080p? Do you want to shoot in 4K? Uh, since 4K is the next technology and we want to try to make our content as evergreen as possible, you may want to shoot your episodes in 4K and upload them as 4K. It's kind of like nowadays we watch 1080p as kind of the standard, and but then when we watch videos that are shot in 480 way back when, it's like, ooh, you know, it's really, it, it dates itself. It really looks old, looks like it's 10 years ago. Um, so, you know, you want to at least be in 1080p, and you may want to consider moving up to 4K at some point when you have the equipment to handle the 4K, the editing and all that. Um, and some of these cameras I'm going to recommend will actually be shooting in 4K. So let's take a look and see what the cameras I think, and this is completely subjective, are the best vlogging cameras for 2017. Okay, so the first camera I'm going to look here is actually the Canon G7X Mark II. And the G7X Mark II is not a 4K camera. It is uh, strictly a 1080p camera, but it is kind of uh, an industry standard for vlogging. A lot of vloggers use it. It's a great little camera. It's got good focus. The Canon G7X the original G7X Mark I, uh, you probably could find on eBay for uh, a, a decent price. Um, the G7X Mark II has a little bit faster autofocus. Uh, it has, um, it's really kind of the same camera. The picture's not going to be increased, increased at all. Your, your, your picture quality over the original G7X isn't going to be improved, but your autofocus is going to be improved. And one of the things you can see, it's got a flip up rear screen, so you can see your framing. Um, and it's got a pop up flash. So, you know, usually when I'm doing thumbnails, I'll actually pop up the flash on that and actually use the camera itself. And then I'll have my video file and my flash uh, shot that I have for my, for my thumbnail all in one place and I can just transfer it over. So now I pulled this up with Adorama and now Adorama is a store like uh, b &H. I do not get paid uh, via, you will find some affiliate links. So in other words, I'll get a commission if you decide to buy from Adorama, but don't feel compelled to buy from Adorama. Adorama's in New York City along with b and is a great source too. 
Um, Drury's camera in Nashville, Tennessee is a great source too. If you're in the Midwest and actually want to go see someplace and you're close to Nashville, I can highly recommend Drury's. Um, but that said, the G7X is coming in at $697 for the G7X Mark II digital camera. The second camera I would recommend is the Sony RX100 Mark V. Now, I actually have the Sony RX100 Mark IV. So some improvements were made to the Sony uh, Mark V um, and it's mostly in the uh, photography portion of it. This is a camera that will shoot 4K video. But keep in mind, and this is kind of a little caveat to that 4K video, the Sony will only shoot 4K in five minute increments. So, I found this to be kind of a limiting factor on this camera. If you shoot over five minutes, at five minutes it cuts off. It will actually keep recording audio, but the video stops recording. And so you're thinking you're capturing video and audio, but it's not either that or it will give you a, a high temperature warning and shut down. So it only shoots five minutes in 4K, but the 1080p is phenomenal. It's a great little camera. It, it retains highlights and shadows. Uh, so its dynamic range is really good, and I can personally speak to that, that, that point. This camera, along with the G7X Mark II, do not have audio inputs. You cannot plug a microphone into this camera. So on the Sony, the microphones were up here on the top of the camera uh, on either side of the pop-up flash. One thing that this camera does have that the Canon does not, this has a pop-up viewfinder which I find handy for video, for photographs, but uh, I don't use it at all for video. So just keep that in mind. You'll have to put some uh, little muff, some dead cats over these microphones, both in the, the, the Canon and the Sony, uh, to cut the wind noise down. The sound quality is not bad, um, but you can also think about recording externally via a Zoom H1 and then have a microphone on yourself and then syncing the audio in post. An added step, but it might be worthwhile for extra video. Now this camera is actually substantially more than the Canon G7X Mark II. It comes in at $998. It's a great little camera. Uh, is it worth the extra money for um, uh, compared to the Canon G7X Mark II? Mm, yeah, that's a personal thing. It may or may not be, you just sort of have to decide. The third camera is going to be the Lumix. So this is gonna be the Lumix DMC LX10. The DMC LX10 is a little um, camera, if it comes up here, there it is right there. Uh, it uses a Leica lens. This shoots in 1080p and it shoots in 4K. Now, unlike the Sony, it will shoot 4K footage in 30 minute increments. So this might be uh, an alternative too. Again, it's got the pop-up uh, rear uh, screen so you can take a look at it and see yourself, see the framing. Um, it's definitely an opportunity, uh, a, a consideration. You know, I'm and, not gonna list these cameras one through 10 as one being the best, 10 being the worst. You know, I'm just gonna give you cameras that I think would be a good choice and then you need to go through and take a look at these cameras and see which one best fits your needs and suits your needs. So you may not like the Lumix controls. You may like the Sony controls. You might like the Canon controls. I'm a Sony shooter. I usually like everything that Sony puts out, but the Canon is a great camera. So just keep that in mind. So these are recommendations. Take a look and make your own opinions about it. Okay, let's keep going. So the next camera that you might want to consider is the Sony A6500. Now, there's three versions of this camera. There's the A6000, the A6300, and the A6500. The A6300 and A6500 are basically the same camera. What the A6500 offers you is touch control on the back. And so you can select a focus on the touch screen and back. Now, I've heard some reviews that the touchscreen in back is not that great, um, that it could be better. There are other cameras that are better for as far as the touchscreen are concerned, but this is the first Sony with a touchscreen. 
Now, the price on the A6500 is going to be around $1,400. It's $1,398. If you were to go with the A6000, it's going to be, I don't see if the A6000 is even available, but the Sony A6000 is still available at $548, but I would actually go with the A6300. And the A6300 uh, for the body is $898. So they both shoot in 4K. They both shoot 1080p. You have about 30 minutes shooting time on the 4K. Uh, there is no pop-up mirror. In other words, this mirror in the back, if I can get it here, does not pop up above it. So you will not be able to see your framing in it. Now this is considered a mirrorless camera. So not only will you have to buy the camera, you'll have to buy a lens. So I would recommend something like a 16 to 35 or a 16 to 200. Uh, some of the kit lenses that come with it, if you can find one with a kit lens that's a wide enough angle, would be just fine. This does have an audio input, so you can input um, uh, your microphone um, right there. You can see you've got a microphone, you've got an HDMI out, and then you've got your multi-port. So um, the biggest thing is you can have a microphone on top of it. You can put a, a shotgun mic, um, whatever you want. So what about Canon? Well, Canon also came out with the Canon 5D Mark III. The Canon 5D Mark III has been out for a little while. Uh, I use this when I shoot e-commerce a lot um, for Amazon and things like that. Uh, this is a relatively large camera. It's a full frame sensor. It's a great camera, but I am not quite sure that you would want to use this as a vlogging camera. Um, I mentioned it because it does good video, it does 1080p, and some people actually use it for a vlogging camera. I myself would not recommend it. It's only because, if nothing else, for the price alone, it's $24.99, plus you're going to have to buy a lens and your affiliated equipment. You can plug in audio, uh, so you can plug a microphone into it, uh, and but remember, it's going to be you're holding it out at the end of your arm, so it might be kind of heavy. The next camera you might want to look at is the Canon 80D. The 80D is a little going to be less expensive than the 5D Mark III. Um, it is going to have a good autofocus system. Again, it's a DSLR. Uh, the body alone, um, I believe, is around $1,200 or $1,000, my, my mistake. So it's, a, let's say, $1,100. It does have a pop-out screen to the side that does rotate that'll face you that you can see. Now, don't make the mistake. Mistake. You know, Casey Neistat used to use Canons all the time, and he had the pop-out screen to the side, but he wore dark glasses, so you wouldn't see himself seeing the him looking at that little pop-out screen. So make sure when you're doing the vlog, you know, look at the camera lens. But the ADD is a possibility. It's got good autofocus. Uh, but then again, it's a DSLR. It's going to be heavier. You're going to have to, have to buy a lens with it. So you're looking at an investment of around $1,500, $1,600 for the camera and lens to start vlogging with the ADD. Here's the next version. This would be the Canon Rebel. Um, the T7i. Uh, your autofocus is not going to be as good as the ADD or the 5D Mark III, um, but it's going to be good. Uh, again, we're running into a relatively heavy camera. It will have your audio inputs and outputs. It will have the flip-out screen. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind if you're wanting to go into a DSLR. Um, the Rebel, you really can't go wrong with, with Canon glass. The glass, the lenses that they make for, for Canon are really, really good. Um, they're always sharp and um, work really well. So when we talk about cameras, let's talk about Sony. So I showed you just a couple of the Sony pocket cameras, or the A6000, A6300, A6500, the RX100 Mark IV. Along the mirrorless side, the A6500, A6300s are considered to be mirrorless cameras. Now, the A7R2 is also a mirrorless camera, but they also make the A7S. The A7R2 is a 42 megapixel camera. It shoots 4K video and 1080p. Phenomenal video, fantastic autofocus, but you can't see yourself. So let's take a look at this camera. So here's the A7R. 
A7R 2 and again it's a 42 megapixel camera it uh, has the pop-up screen but it doesn't you will not be able to pop it up so you can see yourself so it just angles in the back so a little bit useless for um, doing a selfie you have your audio inputs you have a microphone input you got a headphone jack you got your HDMI and a multi-port. Multi-port would be used for like a shutter release and things like that. Um, again, you can see the screen there. Okay, so this is going to be an expensive solution. $28.98 plus you figure another couple hundred bucks for like a 50 millimeter lens, but you really want a wide angle. So you're going to spend about, you know, anywhere from two to $500 on some sort of kit lens or wide angle lens with a zoom to do it. Um, again, you'll have to kind of judge where you are. You will not uh, get a better image resolution um, with this than any, with any other camera. This is going to be an excellent video resolution right now. I'm shooting this video with a A7R2. Uh, the screen capture, of course, is by my computer. But keep that in mind. Uh, that might be an option. So another option would be the the Canon EOS M3. Um, and this is a mirrorless camera. So this actually will uh, have a pop-up screen in it. Um, I think that uh, Canon is, is kind of behind the, the mark on mirrorless cameras compared to Sony. Um, but if you're a Canon fan and you like Canons, again, I would take a look at this. Uh, take a look. Uh, it does have a, a mic input in it, which is nice. Um, it is Wi-Fi capable. Um, it would be definitely take a look at and see how you like it. I would look at the autofocus and see how much the, how the autofocus responds. The price is $549, so it's competitive to what you'd pay for a, um, a, uh, a G7X Mark III. So the G7X Mark III has a built-in lens, and this has a, where you can change lenses. So this is $549 with the 18 to 55 millimeter lens something to look at, something to uh, kind of compare and see if you like it. Another camera to consider would be the Lumix GH4. Now the Lumix GH4 is a nice little camera. It's a micro four thirds camera. It does really good 4K video. Again, it's a mirrorless camera. So you're going to have um, the body plus a lens and then you have your mic inputs and things like that. So it might be a little bit heavier rig. Okay. So um, the Lumix, though, is a really nice little camera. Its autofocus isn't going to be as good as something like the Sony a7R2 or the Sony a6300 or 6500, but it's going to be good. Um, occasionally, you might find that the Lumix GH4 will seek for uh, its focus and then finally find you. But anyway, let's kind of take a look at the specs. So here's the GH4. Um, Again, it's got the flip-out uh, lens or the flip-out uh, monitor. Um, so it's probably be good for vlogging. Um, again, I know some vloggers use this. Uh, to me, um, uh, it's a great little camera. I would love it, but I, I think I, I, I don't, wouldn't want to hold that out on, on or the end of my arm. Again, this is going to be $14.97. The price actually may come down on this because the Lumix GH5 is coming out. So that'll be the latest, greatest uh, Lumix. So you might be able to pick these up secondhand uh, for substantially less as people try to upgrade to their GH5. So that's a brief overview of some of the cameras that you want to look at. Again, like this is the Sony RX100 Mark IV. To give you an idea on size, it's relatively small. It's got the pop-up back window um, or the finder. It's a great little camera, but only shoots five minutes of 4K video. That's a little bit disappointing to me. Uh, again, vlogging cameras are personal preference. You have to see what works right for you. You may not like the way the Sony RX100 fits in your hand. You may like the Canon G G7X Mark II. Or you might like a Canon G7X Mark I. These are things for you to look at and for you to make a decision for. I'm not going to tell you what's the best or what's the worst. Um, but it's important for you to know what's out there. So good luck looking for cameras. 
in the comments below if you have a camera or just bought a camera what did you get why did you get that camera i'd be interested to know um, if you watch this video then you go out and buy a camera what did you get put it in the comments below i'd love to hear so anyway you guys thanks if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do so i really appreciate it have a great day and we'll see you next time